Hello everyone, it's Glenda and welcome back to my channel Creative Grandma. I hope everyone is having a happy crochet or knitting day. Now this is part two of my holiday kitchen set. This video I'm going to show you how to make this quick and easy hanging kitchen towel that coordinates with this easy dishcloth that I already showed you how to make in the previous video. Now the Premier Home Cotton comes in a 96 yard skein, 88 meters, 1.94 ounces, and 55 grams. Now this is an 85% cotton, 15% polyester, and that extra polyester helps keep the colors brighter. This is classified as a number four medium weight yarn. This yarn is machine washable, tumble dry low, so it's wonderful that you can wash and dry your projects. This is color America, color 44-04. Now for the kitchen towel, you're going to need two balls of the multicolor in the America, and you're going to need about one ounce of the white for the handle, a little less. You're also going to need a button if you want to make the kitchen towel, and this is about one and a half inches across. So you can choose whether you want a star, if you want a circle button, or you can get maybe a flag button if you can find a little miniature flag. And I got my buttons at Joanne Fabrics. They have a large assortment of wonderful specialty buttons. You're also going to need a size H8 or 5 millimeter crochet hook. So again, today's crochet tutorial is going to be for the dishcloth. So let's go ahead and get our project started. For this project today, I already have my yarn attached to my hook, and you can use whichever method you prefer to join your yarn to your hook. So for the kitchen towel, we're using the same stitch pattern that we used for the matching dishcloth in the previous video. Again, this is a two-part set. The dishcloth is in one video, and the kitchen towel is in this video. So we're going to go ahead and get started, and we're going to chain 44. You're going to yarn over, pull through the loop on your hook, and this creates your first chain. The loop on your hook does not count as a chain. That's one, two, three, four, five. Continue until you have 44 chains and I'll be back and we'll start row one. I'm back. I have my 44 chains made and now we're ready to begin row one. Now row one is our base row, and rows two and three will be our repeat rows. For row one, we're just going to do a simple single crochet row. We're going to skip that very first chain, insert into the second chain, and work a single crochet. Yarn over the hook, pull it through the chain. You have two loops, yarn over and pull through two loops. Now, if you're new to crocheting and you like to mark the first and last stitch, then go ahead and put a stitch marker in this very first stitch. You're going to single crochet into the next chain. Single crochet into the next chain. Single crochet into the next chain. And you're going to continue and work one single crochet in each chain across until you get to the very end of your chain. I'll meet you at the end of row one. I'm over at the end of row one. This is what your work should look like. You should have a total of 43 single crochet stitches. To begin row two, you're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work. Again, the beginning chain one does not count as a stitch. We're going to work a half double crochet into the first stitch. And when you work your stitch, always go under those top two loops unless otherwise stated. You're going to yarn over, skip the beginning chain one, insert into the very first stitch going under the top two loops, yarn over, pull back through that stitch. You have three loops yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. That's how you make a half double crochet. So now we're ready to begin our repeat. We're going to skip the next stitch. Into the next stitch we're going to work two half double crochets. One,
and 2. And that is the end of the repeat. Let's do it again. You're going to skip the next stitch and into the next stitch work two half double crochets. One, and two. Let's do it again. Skip the next stitch, into the next stitch, work two half double crochets. One, and two. I'll show you one more time. You're going to skip the next stitch and into the next stitch work two half double crochets. One and two. And that is the end of the repeat. So go ahead and continue. You're going to skip the next stitch and into the next stitch work two half double crochet. Skip the next stitch and work two half double crochet into the next stitch. So go ahead and repeat that across to the very end of the row. If you need additional help, just click back on the video. I'll meet you at the end of row two. I'm over at the end of row two. This is what your work should look like. You should have a total of 43 stitches. Now with this row, if you're new to crocheting, then go ahead and put a stitch marker into the very first half double crochet and then into the very last half double crochet. So when you turn your work, you're going to know where the very first stitch is and where the last stitch is of the next row. Now with this pattern, you're going to start with one half double crochet for row two. And when you end the row, you're going to end with two half double crochet. This is how we keep the exact same stitch count of 43 stitches. So now we're ready to begin row three, which is a very simple single crochet row. We're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work. The beginning chain one does not count as a stitch. You're going to skip that beginning chain one, insert into the very first stitch under the top two loops, work a single crochet single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch. So go ahead and continue and work one single crochet in each stitch across to the end of the row and I'll meet you at the end of row three. I'm over at the end of row three. This is what your kitchen towel should look like. You just worked one single crochet in each stitch across and you're going to have a total of 43 single crochet stitches. So now to work rows four through 35, you're going to repeat rows two and row three a total of 16 more times. So again, to continue working on your kitchen towel for rows four through 35, you're going to repeat row two and row three a total of 16 times. If you need additional help, just click back on the video, start at row two, work to the end of row three, and do that 16 times, and I'll meet you at the end of row 35. I'm over at the end of row 35. This is what your kitchen towel should look like. And now we're getting ready to start row 36. So I'm just going to zoom up. To begin row 36, you're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work. And we're going to work a single crochet two together across the first two stitches. Skip the beginning chain one, insert into the first single crochet stitch, yarn over and pull through that stitch. Insert into the next stitch under the top two loops, yarn over and pull back through that stitch. You have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. You just single crochet two together and you decrease by one stitch. Now because the previous row we had 43 stitches, we need to have an even number of stitches for the next row. So that's why we're decreasing by one stitch. Now we're going to work one single crochet 
into each remaining stitch across. Single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch. So go ahead and continue and work one single crochet in each stitch across until you get to the end of row 36 and I'll meet you there. I'm over at the end of row 36. We worked a single crochet two together into the first two stitches and then you worked one single crochet in each stitch across to the end of the row and you should have a total of 42 single crochet stitches at the end of row 36. So I am done with my multicolor. I'm going to change to white and I'm using white so it coordinates with the dishcloth we made. So I'm just going to go ahead and fasten off and again I like to leave that longer length because I use my yarn needle to weave in those ends. I'm going to chain two, pull my hook up, pull the yarn out, grab, pinch, pull down, and it creates a secure knot. And then I'll use my yarn needle and I'll bring this over on the back and pull that knot behind my work. And then I'm going to weave it in and out, trying to match that color. So I'll bring that down here and weave it in and out through those stitches crossed here in through that white and then I'll bring it back a second time and if the yarn is long enough I'll even go a third time just to make that nice and secure. So now we're ready to begin row 37 so you're going to turn your work and now we're going to use our white. So I'm going to leave about a six inch length and again when I'm done with my kitchen towel then I secure this with my yarn needle on the back of my work. So we're just going up to the very first stitch, insert your hook into that stitch and pull your new color through. You're going to chain one and the beginning chain one does not count as a stitch. We're going to single crochet two together across the first two stitches and then we're going to single crochet together across the next two stitches and we're going to repeat that across to the end of the row. So let's begin. Insert into the first stitch, yarn over and pull through. And then I'm just going to pull this white yarn behind my work and I'll weave that in later. Insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. You single crochet two together and you decrease by one stitch. Let's do it again. Insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. Insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. You single crochet two together and you decrease by one stitch. So let's do it a couple more times together. Insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. Insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. Let's do it one more time. You're single crocheting two together across the next two stitches. Insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. Insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. You single crochet two together and you decrease by one stitch. So go ahead and continue and single crochet two together across the next two stitches. Then you're going to single crochet two together across the next two stitches and you're going to repeat that across to the end of the row. If you need additional help, just click back on the video. I'll meet you at the end of row 37. 
I'm over at the end of row 37. You're going to have a total of 21 stitches. Your kitchen towel is going to start curving and we're starting to gather the top of your towel. So you're going to start seeing it curve a little bit. So if you count the top of your stitches, you're going to have a total of 21 single crochet stitches across row 37. So now row 37 is finished and we're ready to begin row 38. To begin row 38, you're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work. For row 38, we're going to single crochet two together across the first two stitches and we're going to repeat that a total of 10 times across to the last stitch. Because we have one extra stitch, we're going to work just one single crochet into the last stitch across. So let's go ahead and begin. You're going to skip the beginning chain one, insert into that first stitch, yarn over and pull through. Insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. Let's do it again. Insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. Insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. Let's do it one more time together. Insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. Insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops, yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. You single crocheted two together and you decrease by one stitch. So go ahead and continue and single crochet two together across the next two stitches and you're going to repeat that across to your very last stitch and I'll meet you at the last stitch. I'm over at the last stitch of row 38 so now we're just going to work one single crochet into that last single crochet stitch. Insert under the top two loops and work a single crochet. And when you look at your work, you're going to see how it's starting to gather. And what this is going to do is form a natural fold when the handle is made. Then it'll fold back and lay nice against your stove or kitchen cabinet, whatever you're going to hang your towel on. So now you should have a total of 11 crochet stitches. So when you count across, you're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 single crochet stitches. Now we're ready to begin row 39. For row 39, you're going to chain 1 and you're going to turn your work. You're going to skip the beginning chain one, insert into the top of that very first stitch, work a single crochet. Now we're going to single crochet two together across the next two stitches. Insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. Insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. Now we're going to work one single crochet in each of the next five stitches. Single crochet into the next stitch, that's one. Single crochet into the next stitch, that's two. Single crochet into the next stitch, that's three. Single crochet into the next stitch. That's four. And single crochet into the next stitch. And that's five. Now we're going to single crochet two together across the next two stitches. Insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. Insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through. You have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. We have one stitch remaining and we're going to work a single crochet into that last stitch. 
insert under the top two loops, work a single crochet. So now when you look at your work, you're going to have a total of nine single crochet stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So now we're getting ready to work even straight rows to form our strap. So now we're getting ready to start row 40. To begin row 40, you're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work. You're going to skip the beginning chain one, insert into the first stitch under the top two loops, work a single crochet. We're going to single crochet in each stitch across. Single crochet into the next stitch. Single crochet into the next stitch. And continue and work one single crochet in each stitch to the end of the row. So we're over at the end of row 40. When you count your stitches, you're still going to have a total of nine single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So now to continue working on your strap, you're going to repeat row 40 21 more times. So if you're not sure how to count rows, just use a piece of paper and every time you start the row, just put a slash until you have 21 slashes so you can keep track of your rows. So again, to continue working on your strap, you're going to repeat row 40, the single crochet row again, 21 more times. I'll meet you at the end of row 61. I'm over at the end of row 61. This is what your strap should look like. And now we're ready to begin row 62. For row 62, you're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work. You're going to skip the beginning chain one, insert into the first stitch, work a single crochet. Single crochet into the next stitch single crochet into the next stitch. So now we're going to make our buttonhole. So we're going to chain three, one, two, and three. We're going to skip the next three stitches. One, two, three, insert into the next stitch, work a single crochet. Single crochet into the next stitch, and then single crochet into that last stitch. So when you look at your work, you're going to have three single crochet, a chain three, you skip three stitches and ended with three single crochet. So row 62 is finished and now we're ready to begin row 63. We're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work. You're going to skip the beginning chain one, insert into the very first stitch under the top two loops, work a single crochet. Single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch. Now we're going to work three single crochet underneath and around the next chain three space. Insert underneath the chain three space and work a single crochet. That's one. Insert underneath the chain three space again. Work your second single crochet. And then insert underneath the chain three space and work your third single crochet. Now we're going to work one single crochet in each of the remaining three stitches. Single crochet into the next stitch single crochet into the next stitch, and then single crochet into the last stitch across. Row 63 is finished. So we have one more row to go. 
So to begin row 64, you're going to chain one and you're going to turn your work. You're going to skip the beginning chain one, insert into the very first stitch under the top two loops, work a single crochet. We're going to work one single crochet in each stitch across. Single crochet into the next stitch. Single crochet into the next stitch. Continue and work one single crochet in each stitch across to the end of the row. And then into the very last stitch, work a single crochet. So row 64 is finished and when you look at your work, you're going to have a total of nine single crochet stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So our strap is finished. I'm done with the white. So now I'm just going to fasten off. And again, I like to leave that longer length. I chain two, pull my hook up, pull the yarn out, grab, pinch, pull down, and it creates a secure knot. So I'm gonna go ahead and weave in my ends and I'll be back and I'll show you how to attach your button. So now all we have to do is sew our button on. So I have my towel folded. It's folded in threes, it's just folded under just like it would be when you hang it on your stove or your cupboard door. So when you look at the handle, what I'm doing is I'm trying to keep my star button up far enough that it's not right down here. So I'm going to skip two rows of the white down here and I'm just gonna put that right there so you can see I have a little space. And then what you wanna do is see where your buttonhole is and then pull this up and put your button right in the center of where that buttonhole is. And then I'm going to sew my button on and then I'll just attach my button and pull my button through the button opening. So just go ahead and take some sewing thread, sew your button, whether it's a star or just a regular round button, sew it to the handle and open your handle up. Again, this is folded. Figure out where you want your button to be and then place it underneath where your buttonhole will be and then sew it in place. So our kitchen towel is finished. I want to remind everyone I do have the crochet tutorial for the coordinating dishcloth. This is perfect as a set. You can make these in Christmas colors, get them made up in advance for the holidays, maybe make some in red with a white border, green with a white border, and then do the multicolor with all the colors and put them together in sets. Put a little bottle of dish soap in with your gift. It just makes a wonderful gift. It's affordable and you can make a lot of these gift sets up in just a short period of time. So thank you again everybody for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this crochet tutorial. So until next time, happy crocheting everyone.